Hey, back again with another full tutorial and playthrough. Today, it's Total Nuclear Annihilation from VPW. Right here, right now, on Digital Victory. Boy, the skill and artistry of these designers and creators never ceases to amaze me. Look at this. This is an absolute work of art. I haven't seen the real one in the wild, but I'm under the understanding that this is exactly like it and does it justice. VPN Workshop has just done an incredible job. The link on VP Universe contains the table and the pup pack. Uh, it does not contain any music, however. The music you have to purchase directly from the artist and don't hesitate, just go get it. It's that good. It's 10 bucks. I mean, it's virtually a steal and it transforms the table and really takes it to the next level. So the object of this game is to destroy all the reactors. Okay, there are nine reactors and those are represented right in the middle of the table here by all these numbers, one through nine. And there are three steps to destroying the reactors. Number one is to qualify the reactor. Number two is to advance it to its critical status. And number three is to destroy it by hitting certain shots on the table. So let's start things off by checking out the major elements of the table before we get to how to do the reactors. Number one is the skill shot. And the skill shot is one of those four rollovers, okay? If you plunge it too hard, it's gonna go through both gates up top and come back down and then you start playing. If you're able to soft plunge it so that it drops through the gates, well, like many pinball machines, as you hit the flippers, that light up there will move. If you're able to match the light to the gate that the ball falls through, so you're gonna get your skill shot points, plus you're gonna light one of these save lights here on the lanes here. You notice the bottom lanes, you got the four lanes, two out lanes and two in lanes. Well, above each is S-A-V-E. Once you get three of those lit, if the ball goes down one of these out lanes and it's the lit lane, it'll save the ball and pop it back out. So that's a big deal. There's another level of skill shot, however. When you soft plunge the ball, and you don't move any lights and it falls through the lighted lanes, not only will you get your regular skill shot award, but you'll also light up all those lights on the keypad to qualify the reactor. You have traditional rollovers up top. Now, when you complete all of them, you got it. You increase your bonus multiplier. And you can do that three times and it goes 2X, 3X, and 4X. The bonuses are shown in the middle of the table and those are advanced by doing all the different things around the table that you normally do to increase bonuses. Nothing real unusual there. There's a left orbit and a right orbit. Now to the left of the keypad there, that's the mystery hole. It's your typical pinball mystery hole. Mystery award completely at random. You get certain awards for shooting it in there when it's lit and I'll show them on the screen here. Frankly, I'm a little underwhelmed by most of the rewards. There are some good ones. Enable the ball save, for instance, or max out the keypad there and lights, but other than those two, it's pretty underwhelming, frankly. To get the reward in the mystery shot, though, it has to be lit up. And to light up the mystery award, you hit these three targets on the left. You see these uh, targets that say rad? Once you've hit all three, that'll light up their mystery award and enable it. To the right of the mystery hole you have those three targets in the middle with nine lights those are related to the reactor as well up to the right you have that little lane with the stand-up targets in there that's how you lock the balls for the multi-ball it's one of many really cool mechanics on this table that are just a little different than normal pinball that i really dig and of course you have the right orbit over there one of the unique mechanics of this table is the ball saves here okay you get your traditional timed ball save when you initially plunge the ball if you drain right away, you got like 10 seconds or whatever to uh, save the ball and it pops it back out. But you also have these letters that are lit up over the four lanes here, S-A-V-E. And if you light three of them up, that enables the save so that when the ball is gonna drain to the outside, if you're able to tap the flipper so that it's lit up in that one, it'll literally save the ball. It's a very valuable thing. Now, when you're going through the reactors, if you're able to advance through, when you get to the third reactor, you get a free extra ball. If you get to the sixth reactor, you also get a free extra ball. Those can be very valuable. So let's talk about the reactors and how to destroy them. Step number one is to qualify the reactor. 
To qualify the reactor, you have to hit the targets in the middle of the table there, those three targets behind all nine of those lights. And what that does is that pushes up each row. So if you hit the left target, you'll see those three lights on the left there. You see the purple one on top and the two pinks. Well, the purple one will move up and disappear and the pink ones will advance. Once you're able to move all of them up so they're all pink, that qualifies the reactor. It's now qualified. Once you finish that, you have to hit the scoop just to the left of those to start the reactor. Now the reactor is started, you have to advance it to its critical stage. And that blue area up there, the upper play field, that represents the reactor. And there's different targets in there and different slings. When you hit it up there, all those things will help advance the status of the reactor to overload, basically, to destroy it. And as you're whacking the ball around, you'll see a little digital display going, you know, 44, 56, 72, whatever, advancing in numbers until you get to 99 and blow it up. Once you've advanced that status past 99, you have one more step to blow it up and the ball will come down and these arrows around the table, you'll have a certain number of them that are lit up white. You hit them, once you've hit them all, it destroys the reactor. At the first reactor stage, level one, only one will be lit up white, so it's real easy. After that, it's two, after that it's three, etc. So each time it gets more more difficult to hit that reactor, qualify it, blow it up, and move on to the next one. Now you remember I talked about this table has interesting mechanics. Well, one of them is that once you destroy all nine reactors, if you do, you win. That's it, the game's over, you win. That's really cool. That's so unusual in pinball, I really dig it. It's a very difficult table though. I've only gotten a couple of reactors done at any given time. So if you're able to finish it, congratulations, you are a very good player. Finally, I wanna talk about the multi-ball. Again, a really cool mechanic. It's that little trough there, that little lane, and it's got the stand-up targets there. So when you shoot the ball up there, it locks the ball behind one of the stand-up targets. You lock two of them, you hit one more there, and that'll release them for the multi-ball. Those targets will drop, the balls will drain, and you're off and running. Once it starts, those targets will pop back up. You hit the ball back up there and knock them down for the jackpots. The first one, you get 1x, the second, you get 2x, and the third, you get 3x. After that, you can hit the scoop there on the left for the super jackpot. Now, during the multi-ball, you can do stuff concerning the reactors in the middle. You can hit those keypad targets in the middle to qualify the reactor. You can shoot it in the scoop to start it. Those are all things you can do during the multi-ball. Now, the multi-ball, to me, the best strategy with it is to wait until you're trying to finish off a reactor. You've qualified it, you've exceeded the 99 to get it fired up, but you just have the targets to hit in the middle, the white targets. That's the best time to start the multi-ball. You got plenty of balls to work with, and remember, later on, as you get more reactors, there's more targets to hit. So it's such a dangerous table. Doing that during a multi-ball is really preferable. Then, once you've completed it, you have to start those keypad lights again. Those are very dangerous because they're right up the middle. What better time to go after them than we have a multi-ball in action? That's the best time to start the multi-ball. And that is total nuclear annihilation. It is a tough table, uh, and we'll talk about that more during the playthrough. But man, is it beautiful. It just plays like a dream. The physics are out of this world. It looks incredible. Uh, the soundtrack, as I mentioned, is, is not free, but it's well worth it. Just a fantastic rendition of an already great table. Let's do it. I have no goals, by the way, in this playthrough. I'm going to try and qualify a reactor or two. Other than that, I'm just going to enjoy it and have fun show you some things. Let's go. All right, so let's get it started. Let's hit some of those targets in the middle, those three purple lights, while we got the ball save active. Because it's a very dangerous target to aim at under normal circumstances. But if you can get them hit while the ball save is active, you're on your way. To what exactly, I don't know, but you're on your way. All right, got the uh, lock for the multi-ball, that's cool. Ah. Oh my God. See what I mean about the ball save? <laughs> that's why you try and hit those with the ball save active. Unbelievable. There we 
we go. So now we gotta hit it up into the scoop. There we go. So that starts the reactor, and that's the blue section up top, that kind of upper play field. It's started and we need to overload it. And to do that, we need to hit the ball in there, right there via the spinners. Get that number to 99. All right, that was quick, nice. Got it. Okay, so we have killed one reactor. Nice. Let's go. Um, now, see, we got starting over basically. The two is blinking. That means reactor two. We need to get same thing. You got to hit it, that dial or that, yeah, dial pad. Okay, but the multi ball is the more effective way to do that if you can pull that off. So that's what we're going to try. All right, there's two locks. Okay, we have only one more purple light to hit, but again, I'm going for the multi-ball instead. What? That didn't start it? That's nuts. It usually does. You barely got to touch it to get that third one started. Okay. There we go. All right, so now let's hit that dial pad for that third light. You got a nice save on the multi-ball as well. Got it. Now we got to hit that scoop. Oh, come on. Oh, got to hit it. Okay. Oh, that'll do it. That'll put it in the scoop. Nice. So we've started that reactor again, and we got to shoot it up in there again to overload it. I said miss that spinner there, dang it. The one on the left is a lot easier to hit, by the way. Uh oh. Woo! Got away with it. Alright. Ah, shoot. Dang it. Bad play by me. Shoot. So, let me show you the cool LUTs here while I, in between balls. Like, oh, I like that black light version. I think I'm gonna play with that for a quick second here. All right, so we are at 14% on the reactor. We need to get that to 99. Ah, shoot. Get in there, nice. Ah, and this light, you can't see the ball very well, so. Let's go back to, uh, how about that one? Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Uh, too bright. All right, there we go. Yikes. Come on, Ed. I'm sorry. That was embarrassing, guys. Well, we got one reactor killed. We almost got two. This is total nuclear annihilation. Brutal table. I hope at least you learned something in the tutorial because my <laughs> play demonstration was lacking quite a bit. But hey, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.